Well, I guess I'm getting to be an old man, because when I found out I was going to review the new Honda Goldwing, I was excited. I remember riding the Gen 4 model, way back in 1999, and being floored by the comfort and utility of it. And also by the mass, it was enormous. Fortunately, Honda decided to put the new Gen 6 on a serious diet, and the new bike has lost 90 pounds compared to the last itineration. And I guess I am an old man, because I'm almost exactly the same age as the Goldwing. This iconic motorcycle has been around for 47 years and has gained an enormous following. Many consider it to be the quintessential touring bike, especially for two-up riding. Brooke and I spent a couple of thousand K on this one and we have the full scoop for you, so stick around for the full review. And as always, if you're finding this content valuable, please consider supporting the channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. The Honda Goldwing evokes images of friendly couples crossing continents with stuffed animals attached to their bikes. And that's pretty accurate, I'd guess. The first Goldwing was just a regular bike with a 1000cc flat 4. The engine grew to 11, then 1200cc, and the bike grew a fairing in bags before Honda came out with the 1506, which has now grown to 1833cc. And here we are. Gold wings come in bagger or full dresser guises and can be had in manual or Honda's excellent DCT automatic. Additionally, you can even get one with an airbag. And while the Gen 4 and 5 gold wings were getting a little too hefty in my opinion, coming in at way over 900 pounds, the new one is refreshingly light, with the manual tour model I tested weighing less than most competing dressers, a svelte 847 pounds full of fuel and ready to ride. That's 60 to 80 pounds lighter than comparably equipped Harleys and Indians, though a bit heavier than the big BMW K1600 dresser. And I can confirm that the Goldwing does indeed feel light for what it is. The flat 6 engine has a low center of gravity and the fuel tank is located very low in the frame. Speaking of the engine, the numbers are impressive. 1833cc flat 6, 4 valves per cylinder, liquid cooled of course, and its location allows a perfect architecture for mating it with a maintenance free shaft drive. The engine is rated at 125 horsepower and 130 pound feet of torque with the torque curve being so flat I frequently forgot to shift. This engine is smooth and incredibly civilized, as behooves a Goldwing, and the gearbox is Honda perfect. The sixth gear on this bike is a massive overdrive perfect for highway cruising at 2,500 RPM. Not perfect if you want to make a quick pass. Passing requires one or two shifts down to get the big motor into its power band. The Goldwing rips but not in sixth gear. Acceleration is seamless but not exciting. Because the power and torque curves are so flat, there's no big hit of power anywhere. Rather, an inevitable build in momentum that feels slower than it is. Watch out that you don't tune out and blow through a speed trap at extra legal speeds. This bike's smoothness makes it hard to tell that you're going really fast. The shaft effect is detectable under hard acceleration but smooths out and disappears once you're up to speed. There are four engine modes, Sport, Tour, Econ and Rain. I honestly found the throttle response in Sport mode a bit abrupt. Mostly I rode in Tour mode and popped it into Rain for gravel or hardcore off-roading. Because of the flat 6 engine, the Goldwing sounds more like a Porsche 911 than a motorcycle. Some riders love the music emanating from the twin pipes, some will prefer more traditional V-twin sounds and character. The stock pipes surprise me with their volume as the engine howls when revved. Handling is one of the Goldwing's strong suits. Because of its relatively low weight and center of gravity, side to side transitions come quickly and the bike feels much lighter than most of the American style competition. Among the heavyweights, only the Beamer K bike can outdo the wing on a twisty road. Suspension is electronically adjusted and is like riding on a cloud. All but the biggest bumps disappear as you sail down the road. The suspension has settings for rider, rider with luggage, rider with passenger, and rider with passenger and luggage, and the ease of electronic adjustment spoiled me. The front suspension is an innovative double wishbone jobby with a front shock and it seems a bit unnerving at first. It doesn't provide the same feedback as traditional forks and I found it a bit vague when I first set out on the bike. However, I very quickly learned to trust the front end and forgot all about my initial hesitancy. The steering is precise and the bike tracks well in corners and can hit some very nice lean angles without scraping parts. Before long, I was blasting around bends in very unheavyweight touring bike fashion. 
I suppose that the vague feel is the price you pay for the bike's amazing ability to soak up bumps. The Goldwing has linked brakes which means that both front and rear are engaged with either the front lever or the pedal. And these brakes are powerful. They hold a bike down with no drama and the aforementioned front suspension does a very good job of preventing fork dive during hard braking. Because there are no front forks. One of the consequences of Honda going with a smaller, sportier Goldwing is reduced tank capacity. The tank is located low in the frame and holds only 21 liters. Respectable, but I prefer more. 300 kilometers gets you down to the last bar on the fuel gauge, and while I'm sure that the reserve is generous, on a long distance touring bike I'd like to go 400 before worrying about filling up. I found the seating position roomy enough with the bars comfortably close and the pegs far enough to stretch my legs. A rider Brooks height would also be comfortable, and although Brooke never rode this one on the front, she was a bit worried about the size of the bike, she could reach the ground fine at 5'7 due to the 29.3 inch seat height. The rider does not have floorboards on the Goldwing, although the passenger does, and some Goldwingers mount engine guards to which they attach highway pegs in order to stretch out their legs. At 6 feet tall I don't need this, but very tall riders may find the legroom limited due to the width of the engine. Because of this, highway pegs will have to be mounted rather wide. For average sized riders and passengers, the Goldwing is very comfortable. The electrically adjustable windshield provides excellent wind protection for both rider and passenger and neither one of us had to clean bugs off our helmets with the windshield in the highest position. On the other hand, having it in a low position makes the bike feel smaller and allows for good airflow on hot days. The Goldwing Tour came with 5-way adjustable heated grips and seats. The passenger seat and backrest were also heated and could be controlled by the passenger with a dial on the side of the back seat. We found the seats plenty roomy and comfortable for the long haul and didn't have complaints. Of course the Goldwing also came with other amenities like cruise control, slipper clutch, keyless and mirrors strategically positioned to keep the wind off the rider's hands. Lighting is excellent with the front lights being extremely visible and two fog lamps actually built into the front of the engine. The bagger version didn't come with the fog lamps. The display consists of a 7 inch LCD with analog speed and tack gauges on either side and two smaller displays for fuel and trip information on one side and heated accessories and open trunk or bags warnings on the other. It's well laid out and equipped with Apple and Android CarPlay and can be controlled with buttons on the handlebar or with a select knob on what should be the tank, but isn't. I'm sure that after a while I'd master all the different doodads, but I did find the interface somewhat convoluted. Zeroing out the trip meter is needlessly complex, as was programming a destination on the nav. The nav is built into the bike by the way and does not rely on data from your phone. The sound system is pretty decent. No motorcycle stereo is going to sound great at highway speeds, but I was able to enjoy the local radio stations and the playlists on my phone on the longer trips and at lower speeds the sound quality is pretty good. One feature many riders may appreciate is the electric reverse gear. Backing up a bike this heavy can be a chore and while several motorcycles come with this feature these days, I believe the Goldwing was the first with the Gen 4 version offering it way back over 20 years ago. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. And so we get the storage, a pretty important feature on any dresser. One of the consequences of making the bike smaller is a reduction in storage capacity. The Gen 5 Goldwing had a 60 liter trunk and 47 liter bags for a massive 154 liters of storage capacity. The current model, although it received a larger trunk in 2021, still lags behind in the take everything including the kitchen sink department. The trunk is impressively large at 61 liters and comfortably fit our two full face helmets with our Cardo communicators and my GoPro attached, plus Brooks armored motorcycle pants and several other items packed around the helmets. However, the bags are down to only 30 liters of capacity for a total volume of 121 liters, less than the 133 liters on competing Harleys. We found the storage adequate as we made a couple of day trips on the bike, one to Ottawa and another to Algonquin Park for a long hike. In both cases we were able to ride to our destination in full gear, then change into shorts and t-shirts and store our helmets, jackets and boots in the locked bags while we went walkabout. So the current model Goldwing manages to be smaller and more sporty but at the cost of some storage space and fuel capacity. In terms of looks I much prefer the current sleeker Goldwing to the last two generations which were quite enormous. This bike looks like the love child of a Gen 5 Goldwing and the ST1300 Sport Tour which to me is a good thing. 
I like a sportier and more nimble bike, and the current Goldwing certainly looks sleek, modern and upscale. Price-wise, it's also competitive, starting at $28,200 in Canada for the manual bagger. Strangely, on the US website, the bagger is only available with the automatic DCT for $25,300. Prices for the tour version with the DCT and airbag top out at 32,800 US or 36,300 Canadian. Goldwing prices undercut the Harleys, Indians and BMWs by a bit, but it must be remembered that both Harley and Indian charge an arm and a leg for paint and extras, and getting a Harley for anywhere near MSRP is a dubious venture at best. None of the competition offers an automatic. So the latest gen Goldwing definitely stands out in a crowded landscape of baggers and dressers with several unique features and characteristics. It is the smoothest and most refined bike in its class, and no wonder seeing as Honda has been building them for 47 years. It is one of the best handling motorcycles in the class as well due to the relatively light weight and excellent weight centralization. And being a Honda, it's likely the most reliable. Despite its weight reduction, it manages to be as or more comfortable than the competition while also being reasonably priced. Additionally, it boasts a huge and passionate community with clubs and rallies aplenty. Finally, if you want an automatic, it's your only option. Negatives? The controls are complicated and will take some time to learn. The 21 liter tank could be bigger, as could the 30 liter bags. Finally, if you want that elemental motorcycle experience, rumbly and rough around the edges, you won't find it here. This bike is eminently civilized. So, the latest Goldwing is definitely sleeker, sportier, less cumbersome and more dynamic than the last couple, and as a rider who appreciates such things, that makes me happy. Happy in fact to trade off some range and luggage capacity for more sport tour character. Yep, if you're going to cross continents, or just take a day trip, especially two up, there are few bikes as pleasant or comfortable for the task as the Goldwing. Whether in bagger form or as the full dresser, the wing remains the gold standard. At a time when baggers are perhaps the most popular cruisers out there, the Goldwing offers an alternative to the American style V-Twins. It's the other will established choice. Get this bike and you sure won't be alone. So what do you think of the new wing? Are you like me and preferring a slightly smaller big touring bike? Or are you a Harley, Indian or BMW fan? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below and enjoy your long distance travels. Old man out. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.